In this lecture, we shall discuss the jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal. We shall discuss the jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal. We shall discuss the jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal. And you remember in our previous lecture, we mentioned that the Superior Court of Judicature as indicated under Article 126 of the Constitution, the Superior Court of Judicature shall comprise the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, the High Court, and the Regional Tribunals. Now, we are saying the Court of Appeal forms part of the Superior Court of Judicature. The question is that, what is the jurisdiction of the Courts of Appeal? Now, you also notice that we have already explained in our previous lecture what amounts to original jurisdiction. We say original jurisdiction is the jurisdiction a court has to entertain a cause or matter at first instance. If the court has a jurisdiction to detain a cause or matter at first instance, we say the court has original jurisdiction. But in discussing the jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal, it is important to mention right from the outset that the Court of Appeal has no original jurisdiction. The Court of Appeal has no original jurisdiction. The Court of Appeal only has appellate jurisdiction. It means that the Court of Appeal does not have that kind of jurisdiction where you go there at first, as a court of first instance in any cause or matter. If you have to go to the Court of Appeal for any matter, it means that you will be going there in invoking its appellate jurisdiction. It means that a case would have already been determined either at the high court and then you appeal to the Court of Appeal, or you have a case at the circuit court in a civil matter and then you appeal to the Court of Appeal. That is when you can invoke the appellate jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal has no original jurisdiction to entertain a cause or matter at first instance. It only has appellate jurisdiction. It means that you must have gone before another court, the matter must have been determined, and then you appeal against that to the Court of Appeal. Remember also for language purposes that the description of the court is not appeal court. It is rather court of appeal. The Constitution describes the court as the court of appeal and not appeal court. There is only one court of appeal in our Constitution, and it's as mentioned under Article 126 of the Constitution. So it's a court of appeal, and please do not say appeal court. Because like I mentioned earlier, when you say appeal court, an appeal court could be even the high court. Because when you go to the district court in a criminal matter, and then you appeal against that decision of the district court, you appeal to the high court. In that instance, the high court will be acting as the appellate court in that criminal matter. In the same way, if you are dissatisfied with the decision of the Court of Appeal, and that's the one that you want, we are told that you can appeal to the Supreme Court. In that instance, the Supreme Court will be acting as the appellate court. So if it is acting as the appellate court, it, it, it's going to be an appeal court in that instance. So when you say appeal court, to the practitioner, it could either mean the High Court, it could mean the Court of Appeal, it could mean the Supreme Court. But when you say the Court of Appeal, there's only one Court of Appeal we are referring to. And that is the Court of Appeal, which is the Superior Court of Judicature. That is directly below the Supreme Court. So there's only one Court of Appeal, as mentioned under Article 126 of the Constitution. And like I mentioned, the Court of Appeal has no original jurisdiction. It only has appellate jurisdiction. What then is the jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal? 
Now, by way of an overview, the Court of Appeal has established under Article 126 of the Constitution. It has jurisdiction for hearing appeals from judgments, decree, or orders of the High Court, regional tribunals, or any other appellate jurisdiction as may be conferred on it by the Constitution or any other law. That is what you have under Article 137 of the Constitution. It says the jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal shall be that they shall hear appeals from judgments, decree, or orders of the High Court, regional tribunals, or any other appellate jurisdiction as may be conferred by the constitution or any other law. And what this means is that under Article 137 of the constitution, we are told that if there's any judgment, decree, or order from the high court, and you are not happy with it, you appeal to the court of appeal. If there's any judgment, order, decree of a regional tribunal, and you are not happy with it, you appeal to the court of appeal. That is the jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal that has been conferred under Article 137 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. They are told that they shall hear appeals from judgments, decree, or orders of the High Court, regional tribunals, or any other appellate jurisdiction as may be conferred by the Constitution or any other law. Now, take note of the second aspect, or any other appellate jurisdiction as may be conferred by the Constitution or any other law. It means that there can be another law that would have conferred some appellate jurisdiction on the Court of Appeal. And in Ghana, actually, we have the Court Act of 1993, Act 459. Court Act 1993, Act 459, where Parliament of Ghana has passed a law that has conferred some appellate jurisdiction on the Court of Appeal. So we'll soon get there. You realize that if you look at Section 44 and Section 11.4 of the Court Act, Section 11, Subsection 4 of the Court Act of 1993 as 459, you will see over there that when there are civil cases, civil cases conducted at the circuit court, even though the circuit court is a lower court, if you conduct a civil case at the circuit court on the strength of section 44 of the court act and section 11 subsection 4 of the court act in such a civil matter you appeal straight to the court of appeal so that is another appellate jurisdiction that has been conferred on the court of appeal that we shall discuss we shall also discuss that if you are appealing against interlocutory orders of the circuit court you are in the circuit court and they make some interlocutory orders. Those interlocutory orders too, you shall appeal those interlocutory orders to the Court of Appeal. And then also we have mentioned that there is the that under Article 99 of the Constitution, under Article 99 of the Constitution, when you have any parliamentary election petition. By the dictates of Article 99 of the Constitution, the court that has jurisdiction is the High Court. Now, when you are dissatisfied with the decision of the High Court, you appeal to the Court of Appeal. And the authority of Inri, Wulensi Constituency, Zakaria and Yimakain, Zakaria and Yimakain, reported in 2003-2004, one Supreme Court of Ghana report appeared man. This case holds that if you are appealing against an election petition, in a parliamentary election petition, the final court of appeal in such an instance is the court of appeal. If you are appealing against a decision, if you are appealing against a decision in the parliamentary election petition, when you appeal to the court of appeal and you lose, you do not have any further rights to go to the Supreme Court. The Court of Appeal is the final Court of Appeal in parliamentary election petitions. And I refer you to Article 99 of the 1992 Constitution and the case of Inrebulency Constituency, Zakaria versus Dimakain. Zakaria is called Z A K 
A R I A Zakaria versus Nimakain. Nimakain is spelled N Y I M A K A N. Reported in 2003-2004, one Supreme Court of Ghana law report at page one. So let's move ahead now. So these are the various jurisdictions of the Court of Appeal we shall look at. That's what has been provided for under Article 137, the Court Act, and also in, in respect of parliamentary election petition. So the first part, under Article 137 of the Constitution of Ghana. Now, Article 137 of the Constitution of Ghana it reads as follows, and I quote, The Court of Appeals shall have jurisdiction throughout Ghana to hear and determine, subject to the provisions of this Constitution, appeals from a judgment, decree, or order of the High Court and regional tribunals and such other appellate jurisdiction as may be conferred on it by this constitution or any other law. We discussed this already, that they shall have jurisdiction throughout Ghana to hear and determine, subject to the provisions of this constitution, appeals from a government decree or order of the high courts and regional tribunals and such other appellate jurisdiction as may be conferred on it by this constitution or any other law. So the constitution even contemplates that there can be some other appellate jurisdiction that may be conferred on the Court of Appeal by any other law. Now also, if you look at Article 137, Clause 2 of the Constitution, it says that, except as otherwise provided in this Constitution, an appeal shall lie as of right, as of right from a judgment, decree or order of the High Court and a regional tribunal to the Court of Appeal. An appeal shall lie as of right from a judgment, decree or order of the High Court and a regional tribunal to the Court of Appeal. What does this mean? It means that if we are appealing against a decision from a judgment, decree or order of the High Court, it shall lie as of right when we say as of right, we mean that when you are appealing, you don't go, you don't need to go and seek permission of the high court before you appeal. We describe it as leave. You don't need to go and seek the leave of the high court before appealing again a decision. You don't need to go and seek the permission of the court of appeal before appealing to the court of appeal. The appeal shall lie as of right. So when you lose a case and the, the judgment or decree of the high court or a regional tribunal. Please, an appeal shall lie as a right to the Court of Appeal. And the authority for this is section Article 137, Clause 2, of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. So this is one jurisdiction that has been conferred on the Court of Appeal. That is appeals from decisions of the High Court, regional tribunal to the Court of Appeal. And you will see that under Article 137 of the Constitution. The next jurisdiction we shall look at is that if you also have a civil matter at the circuit court and you are you want to appeal against that civil decision that decision given in a civil matter please you do not appeal to the high court do, in fact don't even appeal to the high court if you have a civil matter and you're appealing to against a circuit court decision please you do not appeal to the high court look at section 44 subsection 1 of the court act 1993 as 459. Section 44, subsection 1 of the Court Act 1993 as 459. This is what it says, and I quote A person aggrieved by a judgment of a circuit court in a civil action, aggrieved by a judgment of a circuit court in a civil action, may, subject to this act and the rules of court, appeal to the Court of Appeal. A person aggrieved by a judgment of a circuit court in a civil action may, subject to this act and the rules of court, appeal to the Court of Appeal. What does this mean? It means that now if you go to the circuit court in a civil action and there's a decision, order or decree, and you want to appeal against this, please, you do not appeal to the High Court. Under Section 44, Subsection 1, you appeal straight to the Supreme Court, to the Court of Appeal, sorry. 
into the civil action in a circuit court and you have to appeal against it. You appeal straight to the court of appeal. And that is section 44, subsection 1 of the Courts Act 1993 at 459. But you see, the reason I have to emphasize this is because if you look at section 44, subsection 2 of the Court Act, it tells you that a person agreed by a judgment of a circuit court in a criminal trial, criminal trial, you may subject to this act and the rules of court appeal to the high court. So there's a distinction. There's a distinction drawn between appealing against criminal cases conducted at the circuit court and civil actions conducted at the circuit court. If it's a civil action and you're appealing, you appeal straight to the court of appeal. But if it's a criminal action, please, you don't go to the court of appeal. You go to the high court. So don't understand this to mean that whenever you go to the circuit court and you are satisfied with an order, you go straight to the court of appeal. No, it depends on whether the action is a civil action or the criminal action. Because if it's a civil action, section 44, subsection 1 of the Court Act, 1993, as 459 says, that if you are grieved by a judgment of a circuit court in a civil action, you are appealed to the Court of Appeal. This same provision has been re emphasized under Section 11, Subsection 4 of the Court Act, 1993, as 459. If you read Section 11, Subsection 4 of the Court Act, 1993, as 459, same point is there that a person aggrieved by a judgment of a circuit court in a civil course or matter, you may appeal against the judgment to the court of appeal. You may appeal against the judgment to the court of appeal. So we've seen two jurisdictions so far of the court of appeal. We have seen, as we saw under Article 137, that an appeal shall lie as of right on the judgment, order, or degree of the high court and regional tribunals. That is one. Now you have seen that if it's a civil action in the circuit court and you're appealing, you also appeal to the court of appeal. Now, the next point I want to draw to your attention is this. There are times when the circuit court may give an interlocutory order. If the circuit court gives an interlocutory order and you want to appeal against it, the circuit court gives an interlocutory order which you want to appeal against. If you want to appeal against that interlocutory order, then section 11, subsection 5 of the court act, 1993, as 459 says that you don't appeal as a right to the court of appeal. It says that you must, if it's an interlocutory order and you want to appeal against it, you must first go and seek the leave of the circuit court. Tell the circuit court, the circuit court, you have given this interlocutory order. I want to appeal against it to the court of appeal. So please grant me the leave, grant me the permission so that I can appeal against it. If the circuit court refuses, then you may now go to the court of appeal and also repeat the application over there. So look at this 11, subsection 5 of the court act, 1993 and 459. It says, a person aggrieved by an interlocutory order or decision made or given by a circuit court, you may appeal to the court of appeal against the order or decision with the leave of the circuit court, with the leave of the circuit court, with the leave of the circuit court, and upon a refusal with the leave of the court of appeal. So, you see, that is why when we look at Article 137, Clause 2, we said that Article 137, Clause 2 says that when you're appealing against a judgment or order of the High Court, it's a right as of right. And over there, we explain that to mean that you don't need to seek anybody's permission before you launch that particular appeal. But if you're appealing against an interlocutory order given by the Circuit Court, that's why we are, we are told under Section 11, Subsection 5, that if the Circuit Court gives an interlocutory order and you want to appeal against it, you may first seek the leave of the Circuit Court, and upon the refusal, you will seek the leave 
of the Court of Appeal. And this is under Section 11, Subsection 5 of the Court Act of 1993 at 459. Now, whenever you file any appeal, whether it's against an interlocutory decision of the Circuit Court to the Court of Appeal, or you file an appeal against a decision of the High Court to the Court of Appeal, we, does, that we call something conditions of appeal. So if you look at Section 11, of Section 8 of the Court Act, 1993 and 459, it says, the Court of Appeal shall not entertain an appeal unless the appellant has fulfilled the conditions prescribed in that behalf by the rules of court. So even though you may appeal against a decision, it doesn't mean automatically the Court of Appeal shall entertain your appeal. We are told under Section 11, Subsection 8 of the Court Act, 1993 as 459, that before you shall entertain your appeal, you must have fulfilled the conditions prescribed in that behalf by the rules of court. The next jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal we shall look at is that we say the Court of Appeal, as established under Article 126 of the Constitution, we have said that is the final Court of Appeal in parliamentary election petitions. Is the final Court of Appeal in parliamentary election petitions. And what do we mean by this? This is very interesting. So let us go to a step-by-step -step approach to explain why if a person goes to the High Court and you lose in the parliamentary election petition, and you go to the Court of Appeal. Let us let us go to a step by step approach to see why the Court of Appeal shall be the final Court of Appeal in that matter. So, Article 99 of the Constitution of Ghana provides as follows, and I quote The High Court shall have jurisdiction to hear and determine any question whether a, a person has been validly elected as a member of parliament or the seat of a member has become vacant. So, Article 99 Clause 1 of the 1992 Constitution says, as follows, and I quote, the High Court shall have jurisdiction to hear and determine any question whether a, a person has been validly elected as a member of parliament or the seat of a member has become vacant, or B, a person has been validly elected as a Speaker of Parliament, or having been so elected has vacated the office of Speaker. This is Article 99 of the 1992 Constitution, that if you want to challenge the election of a member of Parliament, or you want a declaration of, as to whether the seat has become vacant, the High Court is where you have to go to, and that's Code 99. Now look at Article 99 Clause 2. It says, a person agreed by the determination of the High Court, and that this article may appeal to the Court of Appeal. Now, Article 99 didn't give any further provision that if you're not happy with the Court of Appeal decision, you can go to the Supreme Court. And so, in this case of in rape parliamentary election for women's constituency, Zakaria versus the Makain, reported in 2003 2004, one Supreme Court of Ghana law report at the one. We are told by the Supreme Court that because Article 99, which is a specific article that deals with parliamentary election petitions, because that article didn't provide for a federal right of appeal to the Supreme Court, it means that the framers of the Constitution intended that for parliamentary elections, everything should end at the Court of Appeal. So when you read that case, you get a full import of the decision. But for now, on the authority of every parliamentary election for Woolens and Constituency, Zakaria v. Makai, reported in 2003-2004, one Supreme Court of Ghana law report at page one, we are told that a person agreed by the determination of the High Court in the parliamentary election petition, you have only a right to appeal to the Court of Appeal. You cannot appeal to the Supreme Court. That's what we are told under Article 99 Clause 2 and the case of every parliamentary election for women's constituency, Zakaria versus Nimakai, reported in 2003 2004, 
one supreme court of Ghana law report at page one. So if you examine critically all that we've looked at so far, there are some appeals we can call appeals as some rights. Meaning those appeals, if you're appealing against for those appeals to the court of appeal, you don't need anybody's permission. And that's 137. When you're appealing against a decision of the high court or regional tribunal, it's as of right, you go straight to the court of appeal. Same thing, if you're appealing against a civil action conducted at the circuit court, you appeal straight to the court of appeal. But there are some appeals too that you call appeals by leave. As we saw under section 11, subsection 5 of the court act, 1993 and 459, if you are grieved by an interlocutory order or decision given by the circuit court, that's why you must first seek the leave of the circuit court, and upon a refusal, you go to the leave of the court of appeal. It means you must seek permission of the circuit court. The circuit court, you've given this interlocutory order. I'm not happy with it. I want to appeal. Grant me permission. Grant me leave so that I can appeal against this. If you don't seek the leave, you cannot appeal as a right against an interlocutory order or decision given by the circuit court. So this is where we shall draw the curtains on our lecture on the jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal. Remember, we have mentioned that the Court of Appeal has jurisdiction to maintain appeals from the High Court regional tribunals and that's 137. Mentioned that the Court of Appeal has jurisdiction to entertain civil appeals, appeals in the civil cases conducted at the circuit court. And we saw section 44 and section 11, subsection 4 of the Court Act, 1993 and 459. We also mentioned that the Court of Appeal has jurisdiction to entertain appeals against interlocutory orders of the circuit courts. And that's under section 11, subsection 5 of the Court Act. And then finally, we said that the Court of Appeal shall be the final Court of Appeal in parliamentary election petitions. And that's under Article 99 of the Constitution. In the case of every parliamentary election for Munasi Constituents, Zakaria and Yimakai. This is where we shall draw the curtains on our lecture on the jurisdiction of the Court of Appeal. Thank you.